So after one of the last 1,000 events has completed in Beijing for the ladies, there's some big results and also some big movement for the ladies' rankings and also to the race of the finals as well. Let's go have a look at the results though because we only had that one event for the women. All right, so we had the China Open and Coco Goff winning against Mukova in the final, 6-1, 6-3. It's another great performance by Mukova in her comeback from injury, but Goff too good in the end, winning another major title and her first title since splitting with Brad Gilbert. So despite not playing the best tennis all week, she did still get the result in the end and she got a big boost in the rankings because of it. Right, I'll start with the players that went up in the rankings this week because we had some big movers with Bedosa going up four spots to number 15 in the world after making the semi-finals last week in Beijing. Mukova making the final. She goes up to 31 in the world, which is 18 spots higher than last week. Naomi Osaka, she goes up 15 spots to 58 in the world after having another good week. Unfortunately, it ended in injury, but she is slowly climbing back up the rankings as well. Players that went down to the rankings. Samson over. She went down eight spots to number 23 in the world after losing points from this time last year. Ons Jabur also lost points from this time last year going down eight spots to number 29 in the the world and Garcia also dropping down eight spots to number 44 in the world. Remember, Jabur and Garcia aren't playing for the rest of the year, so any more points they have in the next couple of weeks are also going to drop off and their ranking could drop further. But players there that lost points because they either didn't play in Beijing or they dropped from last year. Okay, let's have a look at the top 10 now. Not too many changes with Fiontek still at number one and Sabalenka at number two, but that could change over the next couple of weeks. We'll keep an eye on that. Pagula stays in at number three, but there was a change in the middle of the rankings with Coco Goff going back up to number four, pushing Rabakina and Pelly down to five and six, of course, after winning in Beijing. And she's not so far away from Pagula as well, who's at number three. So Goff, despite not having a great US Open series compared to last year, still in that top four and still doing okay this year. Zhang, she stays at number seven with Navarro at eight, Collins at nine, and Krajikova rounds out the top 10 for this week. And of course, a thousand points on the line next week. Chance for some other players that are outside the top 10 to get back in the top 10 if they do have some good results. Over to the race, the finals now, and still only the three players qualified with Fiontek, Sabalenka, and of course, Krajikova based on the Grand Slam rule all in the WTA finals. Rabakina stays at number three, very close to qualification, but again, Goff going up two spots to number four, pushing down Paulini and Pagula to five and six. But those four players, Rabakina, Goff, Paulini, and Pagula, they're in the best position over the next week to start qualifying for the WTA finals. Because remember, Wuhan is the last chance to get a thousand points. There are other points on the line, of course, in smaller events, but big chance for a lot of those players to qualify. Navarro, she's comes in number seven with Zhang going up to number eight, pushing Collins down to number nine to round out the top 10. So really, Really, if you're looking at the point situation, Zhang and Navarro are playing for that last spot. Collins isn't playing next week, so she might be out of contention. And a couple of players that are outside the top 10, players like Kazakina and Bedosa, they really have to have a good week next week. And that means possibly winning the title to even be in contention for the WTA Finals coming up. So it's really going to be between Zhang and Navarro over the next couple of weeks, who's going to be playing better to get that final spot because the other spots seem to be locked in. Heading over to the men's side of things now, and no changes from last week because, of course, Shanghai, we're right in the middle of that, so next week, we'll get an update on Shanghai. Sinner at one, Alcaraz at two, Zverev at three, and Djokovic at four. We've got Medvedev at five, Rublev at six, Fritz at seven, Herkatch at eight, Rude at nine, and Dimitrov at number 10. But again, a thousand points on the line in Shanghai. Expect some changes, Expect especially around the Djokovic section of the, of the rankings, because him and Medvedev are fighting for that number four spot. And of course, Djokovic, as we'll find out in a second, is also battling for that race to the finals. Have a look at the race to Turin, and again, no changes, because we are midway through the tournament in Shanghai. So only the three players qualified, with Sinner, Alcaraz, and Zverev all qualified. Medvedev at number four, not too far away from being qualified. If he does do well in Shanghai, either making the final or winning the title, I think, can get him qualified. So, Medvedev, not too far away. Then you got Fritz at five, Rude at six, Rublev at seven, Dimonor at eight, Djokovic at nine, and Grigor Dimitrov rounds at the top ten. But, of course, with a thousand points on the line, chance for Djokovic to overtake a couple of guys with some wins. And if you've been keeping up to date with Shanghai, you know that Dimonor, Rublev, and Rude are all out of the tournament. So, big chance for Djokovic to really push his way into that contention around five or six in the world in the race of the finals, which will well and truly put him back in the race. So there it is. No change on the men's side. We're right in the middle of Shanghai and we're still going to wait for that to be completed before we can start talking about the race of the finals for the men. But the women's is really shaping up. And like I said, there's probably only realistically one spot left because of if you get about 4,500 points on average over the last couple of seasons, that gets you qualified for the most part. So we've got a couple of players qualified already. A couple more probably going to be qualified over the next week. And then of course, battling it out for the last couple of weeks for that final spot between Zhang and Navarro, it seems like are going to be the big battle. So keep an eye on that over the next few weeks weeks, but let me know down in the comments below. What's been the biggest surprise for the rankings this week? Great to see Mukova and Osaka getting a bit of a boost. Good to see them getting back in the race uh, or in the rankings and especially for Osaka to try and get qualified or try and get seeded for maybe not Australia. Might be a little bit too close, but for Grand Slams next year, that'll be a big deal. For Naomi Osaka, Mukova's already back into the seeds at number 31, so she could be seeded at the Australian Open next year. But there it is, the rankings for this week. We'll find out more about the men's rankings next week.